Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Joe and today we're going to go over my personal statement that got me into Oxford. When I was applying, I remember writing my own personal statement, finding it really hard to actually find anything, any examples that were actually any good online. I thought that would be helpful to share my own, walk through my decisions and why I worded some things the way I did and generally explain the process. And just one thing, if you're looking for help with your personal statement or probably more ideally if you've got a draft personal statement and you'd like somebody to look over it for you, uh, then I'm providing some free consultation on that. So I'm going to drop a link in the description down below. And if you do that, then I can get in touch. So without much further ado, let's dive into another juicy personal statement. My journey into the complex issues that economics raises has been truly stimulating. Uh, how else can you open one of these things? I think you just got to pick a sentence and go through with it, to be honest. So, during GCSE history, I became fascinated by factors such as the availability of credit contributing to the American economic boom during the 1920s and analysed how Roosevelt's supply-side policies spurred growth during the Great Depression. I think what we're going for here was explaining a little bit of the history of why you kind of get into the subject in the first place. I'm not really going to say it was actually GCSE history that got me into economics policy. If I was interested in economics, it was out without actually knowing it at the time. I think it's an okay starting point to say, you know, the work, the actual academic work that you've done to date and linking it to the subject that you're studying. At AS level economics, I achieved the highest UMS in my year. Yes, although I did achieve the highest, uh, the, the highest mark in my year, it wasn't a very high mark. I mean, I, I thought I was going to get ruled out of applications on the back of my, my marks. It, it was a bit of a nightmare in our school. We had like five different teachers. Some of them were good, but on the whole, a lot of the class was pretty let down. I think you kind of have to look for the silver lining with a lot of these things. So, I mean, yeah, I did come out on top of my class. The rest of the class didn't do too well, if I remember correctly. The disparity between rational theory and reality intrigues me. Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman instigated my interest in behavioral economics. Uh, now, yeah, D Kahneman just shorten everything in order to save the character count. One thing here is, is like the personal statement. It's not a beautiful essay. I think a perfectly fine way to approach it is basically seeing it as this like really kind of rapid fire bullet point list off of all you've done. And so you have to take all the shortcuts that you can. So shortening the first names just saves a few characters here and there and gives you space for an extra sentence at the end. Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman instigated my interest in behavioral economics. As a virtual investor, I was engaged by the prospect that heuristics such as anchoring are flawed when put in the context of valuations in the securities market. Now, I don't, <laughs> I don't really understand what this means anymore. <laughs> if I could change this, then I would definitely rewrite it. I think uh, what I was trying to say was, yeah, it's interesting seeing how like biases can affect markets and make them like not rational. So following on from this, models are invaluable, but do not account for the psychological quirks of humans. By understanding our biases, we can develop effective policies and strategies to maximize social welfare. So here's a way of basically fluffing out the fact that I've read a book and I kind of understand a bit of what it's about. You know, you read a book, you actually know what it's about. You use some of the language in that book. So talk about heuristics. Um, that's a word that you wouldn't usually use but it's inside thinking fast and slow. Uh, so you make sure to copy it. Yeah, so you have your, your book, you have your opinion, and then you've basically gone on an extension of the opinion. So we're talking about, you know, reading this, this was interesting. You have loads of biases. Uh, and then talking a little bit about how we should be applying those learnings in, in, in future models and how some existing models don't cap keep up. Studying competition between oligopolistic firms engrossed me. John Kay's Foundations of Corporate Success introduced the fascinating field of game theory and why large firms often irrationally position themselves to others. I was intrigued by how Pepsi pursued an inefficient pricing position based upon a wish-driven strategy when economic models suggested it should have significantly undercut the incumbent firm. This was a point in the book. It was talking around Pepsi and Coke's like positioning, but this was basically just copying and pasting a, a bit from the book. I thought it, I genuinely did think it was interesting. Um, when I was reading the book, I was making some notes and that's one of the ones that sort of stood out. Applying these tangible contexts to theory excites me. Continued reading of Ronald Coase's The Firm, The Market and The Law has broadened my knowledge in the theory of transaction costs and how policy manifests. I noticed that this work is often seemed to have usurped that of uh, Arthur Piku, 
So I intend to read The Economics of Welfare. I never did read that book to appreciate how economic theory adjusts over time. Honestly, I think I could have made a lot more of reading The Firm, The Market and The Law. I just mentioned the theory of transaction costs. Like, that's a pretty hard book. And I did actually read it and there's a load of kind of quite interesting stuff in there. Um, so if I think if I was doing this again, then I'd probably spend a bit more time showing that I actually understood some of the concepts in there. Uh, but what I do like about what I did here was linking two different books together. Uh, I don't think I did it in the best way being like, oh, well, this contradicts this. So I plan to read this and understand how Thor changes. Um, but it's a kind of a fair tactic. And yeah, I didn't actually read uh, Pigu in the end. I tried. Well, did I try? No, I didn't try. I just ran out of time. Now, I think a lot of this is like fairly solid, honestly, pretty solid personal statement material. Like you've got your books, you've got your opinions on the books, and then you're trying to relate it to uh, real life concepts or the course. Like that is fundamentally a, what a large portion of the personal statement should be, in my opinion. And like speaking about those books, it gives the opportunity in an interview for your tutor to ask you about them. Um, and then the ball's more in your course. So if you've really read something and your tutor asks you about it, then you can then impress them with the knowledge that you've got. I embrace The Economist's online forum and the Planet Money podcast to assess opinions on polarizing current affairs. An exchange over South Africa's unrealized potential due to poor economic policy spurred me to research the effects that affirmative action and other ANC policies had on the energy crisis, which ESCOM is currently facing. Cool. So... Yeah, I think you can you can spend a short amount of time on The Economist on Planet Money. If you were maybe lacking some other space, then what I've done there is pick out an article, pick out a particular podcast, talk about that a little bit more, read that, listen to that. And, you know, as I say, articles and podcasts are great in that they're pretty low commitment. Um, they're still really interesting and they're worthwhile. They're much easier to write about. You've got this really bite-sized concept. So realistically while you should be reading as many books as possible you kind of have to be realistic and know that it's going to be you know you're not going to read 20 books probably but you can listen to a podcast episode in well 60 minutes pretty risky territory here talking about affirmative action i don't know actually maybe maybe it's interesting to have something a bit more juicy i guess there's loads of really boring topics out there if you've got something that's a bit more spicy uh then then yeah that's worth exploring be brave i expressed my research in the form of a report which i then submitted to the marshall society essay competition now i did actually do this so one thing in here is like none of this personal statement is really a lie apart from reading that book i did pretty much do everything that i mentioned in here nearly everything is true and the point is is that you don't want to lie in any of this stuff why bother lying about something when you can just do it and then you actually benefit from actually having done it. During an inter-school debate on exhaustible resources, I argued the virtues of harvesting extraterrestrial resources in the future. It is my firm belief we should not be myopic with respect to the pace of technological advancement, a key determinant of economic growth and standards of living. Uh, yeah, cringe, but sure i enjoy challenges i progressed to further stages in the uk mt at maths challenge twice with a gold award in all years once achieving the highest mark in my school uh the opportunity to apply my strong mathematical and scientific foundation to economics is motivating motivating reducing systematic error by analysis and alteration of methodology to improve accuracy as taught in a level physics will transfer to econometrics and research while studying and constructing models to understand economic phenomena appeals to my love of lateral thinking. Let's rewind it. Mass challenge. Again, if you've got an achievement or something like that, just name drop it. Like this isn't the time to be too humble. Uh, you know, if you've got something, go for it. I did the mass challenge. I did relatively well in it. So it makes sense to put that in, right? This aged rather well. Um, much better than I was expecting. But I think a, a good thing to do in your personal statement, um, you're wanting to demonstrate an awareness of what certain modules in the courses are that you're studying. I'm impressed that young Joe actually wrote relatively accurately around what an econometrics was. It's certainly one of the more advanced topics you only really study in third year. And to be honest, I think what I probably did there was look on the course outline on the, the university website and pick up the language of how the, the module was described there. I think I did kind of know what it roughly was at that time. 
Um, but yeah, it makes sense to learn a bit more about the course, understand the course, and then say about how the stuff that you're currently doing lines up with that. From here on, like the economic stuff sort of ended and the management stuff started. Uh, and I remember the advice being, and completely correct in hindsight, if you're applying for the joint honors school, go for the one that you, you want. So in this case, I was applying for economics and management, but I was also applying for a lot of other universities for just economics. And I was like, well, you know, is mentioning all of this management stuff going to like make them say no? I think all the admissions teams for other universities, they know when you're applying for like a certain subject and they're not going to rule you out just because you're obviously applying to say like Oxford for economics management or Cambridge for something else. Go for the, the top choice. The standard of your personal statement will be high enough that all the other choices will basically say yes anyway. So receiving a best managing director award at the National Young Enterprise Competition I led our team to the regional finals with our corporate football league. So this was a sort of a weird place to put a an extracurricular thing in. Again, for clarity, like 80 to 90% of the personal statement should be academic. If there has been any talk about, you know, like, oh, what universities want to know is how good a student leader or prefect you were. Um, it's worth mentioning that stuff, but as like a sentence. I think I got a pretty good split here where it's sort of the final 20% maybe of the of the person's statement is mainly about extracurriculars. The universities quite rightly really don't really care about the extracurricular stuff here, about, you know, your sports and your achievements outside of like learning. They want to know whether you're going to be a good student uh, there. So the things that you need to demonstrate as a student are being, you know, interested in the subject, being good at the subject and being willing to, to learn more and being teachable. The way that you do that is more around talking about the academic stuff than the non-academic stuff, surprisingly. Critiquing other companies' structures and strategies against our own helped to conceptualize my understanding of the processes explained in Richard Whittington's What is Strategy and Does It Matter? So, God, I think I fluffed this one, really. Um, read the book, good book. Uh, I think, yeah, just applying it too neatly. I, I, I think I shouldn't have, in hindsight, I'd have just put that earlier on in my personal statement, the fact that I'd read the book, commented a bit more on the frameworks that were discussed in there, I wouldn't have bothered trying to link it to the extracurricular stuff. Shadowing the managing director of a housing development firm amplified my understanding of how firms allocate resources. I think that could have gone. My confidence in achieving goals through organization has grown since cycling from Lamb's End to John O'Groves for charity, performing the lead role in the play last year, my current duty as head boy, and my diligence as a pianist and county violinist. I've learned the importance of balancing commitments with study, my preparation reassuring me I'm well equipped to succeed in my chosen field. I am eager to tackle the exciting challenges of the course, which will enable me to develop a voice that will help guide our future. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. I mean, personal statements are always going to be pretty cringy. Somebody smarter than me could have probably done a better job, but there we go. Quick point on the structure here. I think it's, it's you know, pretty simple in some ways. So you have the opening going as fast as possible. You really don't want to spend time in the introduction. And that's actually a theme with most essays. You don't want to spend too long in any particular essay on the introduction. You really want to get to the, the meat of it quite quickly. Uh, so just no more than a real sentence on, on, on your introduction. And then the main meat of your essay of, of the personal statement here should be just listing all the things that you, you've done. And there's a priority order for that. So you prioritize books, you prioritize essays that you've written. If you can make it flow more nicely than that, then great. But I wouldn't really worry about it reading quite in quite a fragmented way. Um, really, it's short enough that tutors appreciate that you're going to have to jump around all over the place. Talking about what you've done, talking about your knowledge of the course, and then have a little bit on the end for your extracurriculars. And that's really it. So I hope that was as thrilling for you as it was for me. And yeah, there we go. Personal statement. If you're busy writing your personal statement or you don't know yet what you want to put in it, uh, feel free to reach out in the comments or click the link in the description and reach out to me there. I'll gladly help give you some advice on, on what to do. Thanks for watching the video. If you could like and subscribe to the channel, then that would be amazing. Ciao.